Hello again. Now to the second part of the introduction where we go a bit deeper into this idea of participation points. Any of you who have already done introduction to innovation will have a pretty good idea of what's involved in participation points, but every unit that uses them has a slightly different structure. So let's have a look at the way that they're used in this particular unit. First of all, you can find the information about them in the assessment um, menu item and it's the first assessment item. So if you click on that you've got a folder which has got a wealth of detail about participation points. There is a document that explains what the participation points are and what are the various activities that will earn you participation points. Then there's an Excel spreadsheet that will help you to plan and I'll just click on that and open it. Okay, here's the participation points planner. You can ignore the sections that are shaded in green. That is to just to show you theoretically how many participation points it's possible to get. So you can see that it's over 1300 and therefore the target to get 100% for this assessment task of 750 is quite manageable. Now what this has done it's divided the semester into weeks and given you an opportunity to make a plan for how many participation points you hope to get each week by what activities. You don't have to do everything. If I flick back to Blackboard for a minute and you look at the description that this spreadsheet is attached to it gives you an outline of what the student, the theoretical student, who's made this plan has decided to do. So, for example, you'll notice that they're not doing lecture notes every week. This person's decided they'll do lecture notes for the first five weeks, but once it gets into weeks six through ten, where we start to focus on the fields of entrepreneurship, they've decided they'd rather do the online lecture activities. They're doing the mandatory reading every week. They're doing the reflective journal every week. And this is something that I really encourage. In fact, talking to my fellow tutor at Ritler Ferrier, he described it as um, mind, body and spirit. Mind is the preparation and learning you do outside of class. Body is attending the tutorials where you actually get to discuss things and learn from your fellow classmates and spirit is the reflective part. Then within that, you can make plans to do maybe a long video or article summary every week, every second week, and two short video or article summaries alternate weeks. This student has also planned to attend all the tutorials and take every opportunity possible to earn participation points by, for example, doing a start of class activity such as a round robin or an in the news or an in my journal. <clears throat> in week five they're rostered on to do feedback on student presentations where they get 10 participation points for each presentation they do feedback on and by turning it up every, up at every class they'll at least get some participation points for participating in group activities and they've chosen to try and take a leadership role as often as they can so they can get points for leading a group as well. All in all, you can see that the participation points accumulate and by the end of the semester, they've got um, the full 750 participation points, which are the target. You don't have to get 750. You might decide that you only need to aim for a credit on this particular assessment, in which case your target can be lower. <clears throat> Back to the details of how you get these participation points. Here you will see uh, templates for the different sorts of outside class participation points that you can submit. First one you need to look at is the weekly PP submissions template, which is the overall document that you will submit through the assessment link on Blackboard. Let's have a look at it. In this template, 
what you do is you tally up the number of the items that you've submitted. So there's only one lecture, well there may be more than one lecture module but we regard that as one lecture per week. So you can do one of those per week and each of them is worth um, 20 participation points. So you put in one lecture summary, total 20 participation points. There's usually only one chapter summary, so if you've done that, you put that in as well. You might have decided to do, <coughs> pardon me, two long articles, in which case you've got the number two and a total of 20 points. And maybe you've done one short article, which is worth five points. So if you total that up, you've got 55 points submitted for that week. Now, then you have to put the actual contents in. For each type of summary, there is a template. So let's have a look at the template for the lecture notes. Here you go. It's fairly straightforward. There are multiple topics in each set of lecture modules. So for each main topic, main points made, what did you find most interesting, what did you disagree with question or find unconvincing. We want to encourage you to actually question what you see and not necessarily take it as face value. <coughs> you don't necessarily have to justify your disagreement, but we do want you to think about, does that make sense? Or I don't quite understand how they arrived at that conclusion. That's part of, if you like, critical, um, yeah, learning to constructively critique something. So that's your summary, your lecture summary. So you would fill that in, copy the whole lot, and paste it below the line into your weekly submissions template. Then you might add a long article or video summary. The instructions are in the template and this is what you have to do. The article citation, main message, relevance to the unit, most interesting, least convincing, anything else you'd like to add. Fill it in, copy the lot and paste it into the submissions template. And in that way you collect together your participation point submissions document for the week. Now this is only for the participation points that are done outside of class and don't involve blogs and journals. They have separate links. Finally, when you've got that document together, you need to submit it. Now there's a separate link for each week of submitting your participation points and the due date is midnight on the Sunday following your tutorial. So. Sunday at the end of week one, Sunday at the end of week two. For week one, we give you a bit of extra time because you're still getting used to the process. So you can submit your week one participation points up until the end of week two. Week two is due at the same time. Let's see how you do this. There's a link here to PP submissions, or you can arrive at the same place by clicking on the menu button. <coughs> And you'll see that this has links back to the instructions and templates and the planner. It's also got a link to the Entrepreneur I Admire blog because that's not linked to from the individual learning materials buttons. Okay, now what you will notice is at the moment there is nowhere to submit your participation points. Now, this is because we want you to have a checklist to make sure that you're ready to submit before you do so. So you will find for each week there is an item that looks something like this. Are you ready to submit PPs for week one, two, three, etc. So have a look at the checklist. All the PP items in your document relate to week one. So in other words, you're not trying to submit week two materials in your week one participation points. They're all in a single document and you've included everything you intended to submit for this week and there's a checklist of the items that are available for the week. 
Normally it will be the same set of items, but occasionally, such as in week five, where you can submit the team charter as well, there may be an extra item. When you're confident that you understand what you need to do, you click on this Mark Review button here, and then you will be able to see the PP submission for that week. Now that's simply submitting a file. Please do not paste your text directly in. Browse, add file, submit, and that's it. You can save a draft if you want to, but be aware that it won't be available for grading until you submit it. So make sure you submit by the due date. What you will find is that as the semester goes on, when it's time to submit for week two, and are you ready to submit PPs for week two item will appear, you will do the checklist, mark reviewed, and then you'll be able to see the submission link. So that's pretty much it. There is quite a lot to get your head around to begin with, but <clears throat> it falls into a rhythm quite quickly. And if you get into the habit of spending a particular day of the week or half a day on this unit and making sure that you've covered the lecture materials, you've um, done your PP items, then you can actually get through this quite efficiently and quite time effectively. That's all I have to say about PP submissions and PPs in general right now. Obviously there will be opportunities to ask questions in the tutorial as well. Um, you can refer back to this video module at any time. A link will be provided on Blackboard in the unit outline and administration area. You are invited to start doing some of the PP activities, particularly the blog about the um, entrepreneur I admire, and of course the activities associated with online lecture modules before your first class. Get off to a great start. Thanks. See you on Friday.